Have you been back in 30 years? No. no. We, we've avoided this place. <laughs> Why today? Why have you agreed to come with us today? I want Angela to be remembered. Mm -hmm. I want what happened here to the Victorian police to be remembered. Arthur and Marilyn Taylor are returning to Russell Street, to the place where their daughter Angela was murdered. She was a great loss to a lot of people, a lot of people, because she had so many gifts to give. She was the first policewoman to be murdered in Australia. It was a terrorist attack. And it was something that our beautiful country is just not used to. Obviously, where we are now is where it happened. Yeah. It's a bit chilling. It's very chilling. It's very chilling. It's sort of hard to believe that 30 years ago this was just chaos. There is a shocking mystery behind Russell Street that endures to this day. The life of another young woman taken years later. A teenage girl abducted and murdered in what police suspect was a callous act of revenge. Not only did it cost Angela Taylor's life, but it costed Prudence's life and people getting injured. I can't think of anything worse than knowing that something evil that you've done has caused the death of somebody you love. I know, it's bad. I think about it a lot. It's Thursday, the 27th of March, 1986. Around 12.30pm, a car is parked close to the southern entrance of the Russell Street Police Complex. In the city watch house on the other side of the street, Angela Taylor and a colleague are working out who'll do the lunch run. How about I flip you for it? All right, deal. A flip of the coin that will dictate life or death. Heads, your shout. As she walks across the road to the police canteen, she's oblivious to the threat directly in her path. The bomb car is crammed with more than 20 kilos of explosive. Its sole aim to maim or kill as many police as possible. At 15 seconds past one, it detonates. Russell 750. 750, I presume you heard that loud explosion right next to you. Russell 750, it um, totally shattered our windows. All around is chaos. Secondary explosions and the fear of another major blast. 22 people are injured, 11 of them police. Where were you on the day when it happened? I was driving home and uh, listening to the car radio and they said that there'd been an explosion at Russell Street. When I got home, um, there were two senior police officers there. And I remember at the time... Sorry. Every single photograph, she's got the same gorgeous smile, hasn't she? You can't help but notice it, can you? Everyone who knew Angela Taylor remembers her trademark grin. <laughs> Angela was the ducks of her squad, a young officer destined for a glittering career. She was just 21. It was a strike at the heart of the Victorian police, wasn't it? 
There was a strong desire to kill as many people and injure as many people as possible. With 42 years of service under his belt, there's not much that rattles Detective Inspector Bernie Rankin. But few cases have affected him quite like Russell Street and the murder of Angela Taylor. She was thrown across the street, um, dreadfully burnt. And she hung on for three weeks, didn't she? Yeah, she did, yeah, very brave. Do you remember the day when you heard she died? Yeah, 20th of April. Nobody ever forgets that here, do they? Every cop remembers. She was a fine young woman, lost her life. The question was, who hated police so much that they would try to kill so many? A 100-strong task force was dedicated to catching the killers. This is some of the key evidence. This is the piece of wood that the actual bomb device was set up on. A similar type of alarm clock. The vital clues. The forensic uh, evidence really was overwhelming in a lot of ways. That would lead police to the bombers. A month after the bombing, a breakthrough. Detectives raid the home of criminal Peter Reed. After a shootout, they discover gelignite and detonators identical to those used in the Russell Street bomb. The evidence exposes a gang of violent armed robbers. Peter Reed, Craig Minogue and his brother Rodney, and Stan Taylor. One final member of the gang proves critical to the police investigation. One thing you don't want to be branded is a dog. No one trusts you, no one wants to be part of your friendship or anything like that. That is forever. You taint it with it like I'm tainted now with it. Paul Hetzel is the robber turned supergrass, the gang insider who ratted on the Russell Street bombers. During a long stretch in Pentridge Prison, Hetzel became close to Stan Taylor, one of the jail's most feared inmates. My name is Paul Hetzel. I'm serving a 22 and a half year sentence for armed robbery and attempted murder. Uh, my name is Stanley Brian Taylor and I'm serving 21 and a half years for robbery under arms, bank robbery, etc. The two met again outside jail in late 1985, when Taylor introduced Peter Reed and the Minogue brothers the young gang members he called the animals. Oh, my God, if you had seen the armed robberies and, and the violence that was used, you could see where they got the nickname the animals from. So you actually participated in armed robberies with I did, yes. the Minogues and Stan Taylor yes. and Peter Reed. Tell me about those robberies. How violent did oh, they get? Oh, they were just extremely violent. Every Everyone, someone got bashed or kicked or something like that. You were more scared of Stan and the Minogues and Peter Reed than you were of the police, weren't you? Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he was terrified. I will say that. And when the armed robberies progressed to the level of violence that they did, I think Hetzel realised that he'd gotten in a bit too deep and he was desperate to get out. On the fringes of this dangerous criminal world, seven-year-old Prue Bird, the granddaughter of Paul's partner, Julie. Little Prue was to become the target of a vicious threat. So tell me about it. What sort of a little girl was she? Adventurous, precocious. I used to call it precocious Prue. And did she love coming to see you? Oh, yeah. She loved it. She loved it with Nanny and Paul. I absolutely adored her. I've got no children of my own, and she was like my surrogate daughter. And she loved you back? Oh, yeah, oh, she yeah. was beautiful. And that, you, <laughs> uh, you just don't understand the rapport we had and the relationship. It was a lovely relationship, and that. And Craig, Stan, they, they saw, saw it, it and they knew it. They knew it. They knew they had you mm -hmm. through her. Yes. Yes.
Coming up, the bomber's last secret. She was killed as an act of pure revenge. What? This is payback. This is payback. Who killed Prue Bird? Who's to say that it's not the old Craig Minogue who gets released? And... Fire. How much worse the carnage could have been. Wow. The origins of Russell Street can be traced here, to Gold Country, an hour and a half northwest of Melbourne. Five months before the bombing, the gang targeted this now abandoned mine. It was down a dirt track. We cut the lock on the gate, went in, cut the lock on the gate to the mine, to the shaft, went in, and there was no one there. It's an eerie feeling, three decades on, following in their footsteps. These tunnels didn't produce an ounce of gold, but for the ruthless robbers, they held something equally precious. The gang came here for one very special reason. Hidden deep in the mine was a massive stash of gelignite and detonators. They broke open this steel strongbox and took the lot. How much gelignite did you get away with? Oh, there was a heap of gelignite in the thing. I don't know, it was two or three boxes. Massive amounts. That's massive amounts, yeah. It was after the, the gelignite was, was stolen, Taylor brought the subject up, well, why don't we bloody just uh, use this on, on the police? Let's load a car up and um, drive it under Russell Street. Did you ever take seriously their threat that they were going to blow up Russell Street? No, I didn't. The bombers are planning a massive blast. There are 50 sticks of gelignite here in the boot, but that's actually less than half the total bomb. There's another 64 sticks of gelignite here in the front. And all of these explosives, 114 sticks of gelignite in all, are connected to this timer. It's meant to go off in one simultaneous blast, but the bombers have made a critical mistake. This was a deliberate, outright attempt to murder as many people as possible. Does the memory of that day still linger with you? Oh, yes. You don't forget. What do you remember most? The senselessness. Retired Major Kevin Cuthbertson is one of Australia's foremost explosives experts. In 1986, he was the lead bomb technician with the Defence Department. Through to the detonator yep. outside. Quickly on the scene of Russell Street, he saw there were unexploded sticks of gelignite strewn across the street. They misunderstood the type of detonator that they were working with, and that subsequently only fired part of the charge. So only part of this massive bomb went off? Yes, that's correct. Well, the big question is, what would have happened if both parts of the bomb had gone off simultaneously as the bombers intended? Well, there's only one way to find out, and that's to replicate the Russell Street bomb. We're going to blow up this identical car. The scale of this explosion means extreme caution. To stay safe, we need to be almost a kilometre away. Fire in the hole, we are ready to go. Camera's ready. Camera's ready. Countdown, five, four, three, two, one, fire. Wow. Stay in cover. Massive blast. You can feel the pressure wave, even at this distance. We felt it, yeah. You imagine that trapped inside buildings. 
That was just extraordinary. That is very sobering. If you imagine people, 20, 30 metres of that, devastating. Our high-speed camera gives a unique perspective of just how powerful this explosion was. Wow, there's not much left. So a heck of a lot more damage is being caused oh, yes. in this bomb. Yes, and the pressure wave reflects across the streets and the cross that's, streets. That's what we saw today. You can see the shock wave just reverberating up the hill. Well, you imagine that bouncing off buildings, smashing windows. Many, many more people would have died. Yes, very much so. Terror in the heart of Melbourne as car bombs explode outside the Russell Street police complex. Paul, shortly after the bombing, Stan mm. Taylor came to see you, didn't he? Yes, he told us all about the bombing. He told us how they loaded the bomb car up, and then after the bomb went off, you know, he said something about, oh, you f***ing beauty. They were really happy that the bomb oh, had exploded. Yeah. A month after the Russell Street blast, with the arrest of gang member Peter Reid, the net was closing. Paul Hetzel's inside knowledge of the bombing was now a serious liability. Craig Minogue came to see you as well, didn't he? Yes. Basically, that was when he threatened us. He was saying about that any bastard ever spoke about it and that, you know, they'll be killed. And that's when he said, wouldn't it be a shame if anything happened to your little Prue? Craig Minogue says he never made any threat to either of you about Prue. Well, yes, he did. I think Craig should remember things. I think his memory's failing on him. With the capture of the rest of the gang, Paul Hetzel told all to police. But in prisoner parlance, you were a dog. Oh, God, yeah. The you biggest were dog going, yeah. And you knew from that moment on my life would be in danger. And your families. That's right. Innocent victims of police corruption! After a five-month trial, Stan Taylor and Craig Minogue were jailed. Taylor for life, Craig Minogue for a minimum of 28 years. For the father of Angela Taylor, today represents the final chapter in a traumatic two years. I think in the end, I think I wanted to be there when the book was finally closed. Peter Reid was found innocent of all bomb charges and Rodney Minogue was later cleared on appeal. But the shockwaves from Russell Street were far from over. Years later, in 1992, in the Melbourne suburb of Glenroy, 13-year-old Prue Bird vanishes into thin air. It was like... Somebody had hit you in the heart. She didn't run away. They'd got her. They were punishing me. I she didn't run away. This is payback. This is payback. And I just felt sick in the guts. For 17 years, there is no solid lead until this. Look, I'm admitting to the fact that the death's my, my fault. Yeah. I admit that. I admit that. Responsible. Les Camilleri is one of Australia's most heinous killers. The monster who murdered Bega schoolgirls Lauren Barry and Nicole Collins in 1997. Horrific. Former Detective Sergeant Brent Fisher extracted his confession to abducting and murdering Prue Bird. I off, grabbed a girl. Grabbed the girl. Threw him back the car and uh, she didn't wake up. Camilleri, though, is claiming that he did this all by himself, that nobody else was involved. Yes. Do you believe that? No. Then what happened? She 
Like any of those, you can say nothing. You put her in the car and drive off. Okay. There's no doubt in my mind that Camilleri has committed a crime with others, and this crime is a payback for um, the Rush Street bombing. You're in absolutely no doubt about no that. No doubt. In recent years, Craig Minogue's brother Rodney has been running a brothel in Sydney. But police say that back in the late 1980s, he did jail time with a close associate of Les Camilleri. And in 1992, when Prue Bird disappeared, Rodney Minogue was placed by two separate witnesses close to the teenager's home. Rodney Minogue was seen in Glenroy leading up to the disappearance of Prue Bird, as well as in the days after. I believe he knows more about the, the case and can assist police. The police theory is that Craig Minogue, from behind bars, gave the payback order, though there's never been enough evidence to pursue a conviction. Both Rodney and Craig Minogue vehemently deny any involvement in Prue Bird's disappearance. But in 2012, in an interview with Bernie Rankin, Craig Minogue did make one unexpected and remarkable admission. I reminded him that he was actually rightfully convicted of the Russell Street bombing. And he paused for a moment and he said, yes, I was rightfully convicted. And I must say, I was astonished because to my knowledge, that's the first time he'd ever admitted the fact that he did in fact blow up Russell Street. So after 25 years, the Russell Street killer finally admitted his crime. He did, yes. You, you wonder what's behind his motive for all this. Like, he's, he's trying to get parole and he's trying to demonstrate to a parole board that he's no longer a risk. In recent years, Craig Minogue has worked hard to be a model prisoner. He's earned a doctorate, has his own website and wants to be a counsellor for other prisoners. Later this year, the parole board is due to decide whether or not he should be released. There was a person in prison with him, Alex Zach Marcus, and I think it was a pecking order issue. And Craig resolved that by picking up a bag of weights and flogging him to death with it, beating his brains out on the floor of the prison. Now, that happened not long after he blew up Russell Street. Now, if Craig Minogue's released tomorrow, who's to say that it's not the old Craig Minogue who gets released? You know, what if you take his parking spot? You know, what if you bump into him in a bar? Are we going to see the old Craig Minogue or are we going to see a reformed Craig Minogue? And I'm not convinced that he's the reformed Craig Minogue he's making himself out to be. Hi, Angela. Hi, Andy. Back again. 30 years after Russell Street, Arthur and Marilyn Taylor still bear the loss of their precious daughter with courage and dignity. Love you, Angela. They steadfastly refuse to acknowledge the men who took her from them. Bye, darling girl. One of the two innocent lives that police believe were claimed by the Russell Street bomb. Nearly 24 years ago, yep. that young girl disappeared. Yes. And you believe, don't you, she was killed as an act of pure revenge. That's right, I do. I do. They got you. They certainly did. And Paul, if Craig Minogue does get out, you believe strongly, don't you, that he's holding one last terrible secret? And that is where Prue's body is. So what do you say to him? Let's assume he's watching you right now. Craig, be a man. Give us some peace. Show us that you're rehabilitated. 
and tell us where Prue's body is. We owe the child a proper burial 